So the t on the talent side, it, it, it well, I guess let me let me say, certainly the Irish organization within Fidelity and the Irish staff are, are innovation is part of the DNA. It's part of the top two or three kind of lines on our value proposition, both internally and, and, and writ large across corporation. So the expectation from the corporation is that our people, um, and and you know I don't like to use the verb innovate. Our people think innovatively and they promote an, an innovative culture. Um, and certainly my expectation of the, the people we're hiring and, and the staff um, is to be that, uh, to have that kind of mindset. I think it's actually phenomenal. Um, I think, I know there's been some, some good discussion around what are we doing in academia, and a lot of that was around research, but I think what that panel didn't really touch on is, is how are we um, empowering and inspiring the students to think? Um, and I was actually looking yesterday at, <clears throat> there's a thing called the GE Innovation Barometer, which, ironically enough, I couldn't open because I didn't have the right version of HTML on my computer. Um, but there, you know, it's, it ranks 25 or 30 different country, countries. You know, we all like the country ranking tables. But um, and Ireland was one of them, and it scores very high generally. But it was number one in the world in the the ability for for new grads to come out of university with an innovative mindset. That's our experience. I mean, we've been in Ireland for nearly 20 years, and that's been our experience the whole time. And so. Um, I think that speaks to, it, it's there, and it's really a question on, uh, you know, th that's on us as leaders of industry to, to embrace it and, and unlock that and, and remove barriers. It's a pretty new experience for, for ESB to be, be involved in innovation, and, you know, as I said, the, the beautiful thing for me was that, that I, was, I inherited the team that are, they're different, and, um, you know, we're beginning to look at different ways of doing things. And for instance, Novus Modus is, was one of the innovative things that ESB started, where is, which is a venture capital fund fundamentally of 200 million, which is going to invest in clean tech, not just in Ireland, but hopefully most of it in Ireland. And one of the interesting things that came out of that, and it's the first example of, of innovation in action in ESB, was that there was a small American company called 10K Solar. They have a new method of you know, applying photovoltaic solar energy. And at, a, at a, a, an explanation of an, an, at an, uh, what you call an investment company, or investment meeting, the guy that was proposing this um, investment talked about the rapid changes in, in solar photo, photovoltaic that happened in the last few years. And I asked it, some of the team to have a look at it, and it was amazing what had happened that within a space of less than five years, the cost of photovoltaic solar energy had, had more than halved. So it's all, all of a sudden, it, became, it came on the horizon as something that could be grid neutral in a very short time. So we took, then we took that, that study and we handed it over to our renewables people. And they are now going to do an experiment, a pilot scheme on the roof of our, our, of our premises in Leopardstown with photo photovoltaic as, as a, po a potential um, disruptive technology. And that was the first real manifestation of how taking something from concept through an organization like ESB and handing it over then to the people who actually make things happen. And I hope, hopefully it'll work out, but it, it was the first explanation to me that this was the right way to go. And the first illustration of something real happening from a concept. Again, coming back to the fact, I suppose, that the Irish Research Council is funded through the Department of Education and Skills, so we obviously have, in addition to our funding role, an advisory role in feeding into, into, in, in, into that department. And I suppose it's fair to say, and to be fair to the institutions, uh, the, the universities and the IOTs, there has been a recognition, I think particularly over the last four or five years, that there needs to be um, a fundamental change in the way that education and training um, is, is done. 
um, that's in the context of actually, even from the point of view of modes of delivery, uh, having disruptive technologies actually um, in, in, in the lecture hall and in the way, the, way, the way the things that are actually taught and done. This is an area generally across Europe that actually uh, we, we really have not, we have not grasped as well as they have, for example, in, in the US. There's, there's, there's quite a number of types, types of initiatives and there's uh, a report, uh, Modernization of Higher Education, that's been produced by the EU that identifies this as one of the areas that Europe really needs to up its game in. But, um, and, and I think there'll be a lot more attention on that, but to be fair, I think the institutions have actually started, and I'll, I'll mention DCU because Green sitting in front of me, uh, has actually done things like put in place the initiative, their Generation 21 graduate, where across all courses, all areas, regardless of, of, of discipline, they're embedding um, uh, the, the, the type of training and education that actually gets people to think a little bit more outside the box, as you say, I hate using that phrase, but actually gives them the type of skills, or it's, it's not that they don't have the skills, they actually have the skills, it's more about helping cultivate uh, the skills and enabling people to actually see how they might uh, potentially, uh, potentially use them into the future. What we've done for, at the, from the Irish Research Council perspective is, is that now when we fund people, not uh, like we obviously have what we call our very much our employer focused portfolio, uh, two of the programmes I've mentioned, um, but even in funding, whether it's uh, humanities, social sciences, physics, geology, whatever, when we fund masters and PhD students now, uh, we pretty much insist that actually as part of that training and education experience, there is actually a programme of um, <coughs> development and cultivating of other skills. There has to be a record kept of that. And again, coming back to our focus, which is the people, it is actually about enabling the people and developing the people so that they can actually best be the best people that they can be when they go out there. And we think that that mind shift and, 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 sh and shift around thinking that the PhD experience is not, it's, it's obviously the thesis is absolutely core and at the end of the day what actually gets you your PhD. But we want to make people who do PhDs and <coughs> Masters much more ready for the workplace outside ac academia. So we're starting to insist very much that they get these types, these types of experiences. It's a deeply fundamental question. The, the, the power of culture is, you know, our, our behavioural norms, the things we take for granted are the most fundamental components of who we are. It, we, when you don't question it, you just do it. I drive on the right-hand side of the road, suddenly I'm in the States, it feels odd, right? Um, the language is different. The, uh, the food is alive, right? Um, it's, there are things that, that when you, what's that phrase? The fish only knows it lives in water when it's on the bank. So there's a lot we take for granted. Culture is deeply important. We have a very distinct cultural reality with its strengths and its weaknesses in this country. My observation through the lens of a, um, a you know, through my workplace, of course, but maybe more emotionally connected for me is through the lens of a, you know, 13, 15 and 17 year old is that we're doing an extraordinary job on the intellectual quotient. You know, our, our system is, is good. My, my kids are learning what, what we can measure around intelligence and what we can focus on in that space is good for them, but we're not close, not even vaguely close on, on EQ in my opinion, nowhere close. We do not have that you know, Montessori style mindset that stretches through our schooling system. We don't have the German approach to uh, getting out and making things. And, and that's a, it happens to suit my kids, they'd probably be crap at both of those, but the, but the reality is that, that the nation, as a nation we need to find the, those who have natural strengths in that place and draw them through. The most significant year for my um, eldest and the currently most significant year for my second kid is the year it was transition year, where they got to do dance and they got to um, code and they got to go to workplaces and see what it was like. You know, my eldest decided in there, she was a blank canvas of not knowing what she wanted to do, but she found um, the minister isn't here, she found the doll deeply dull um, uh, I should say she found my workplace deeply dull. Um, um, the forecourts were interesting, uh, but being in a surgery, and she'd never dissected a mouse, right? Um, she was in a surgery and she found it fascinating uh, watching the surgical process and instantly decided that's what she wants to do. And so suddenly she's reading outside of her core curriculum on stuff that she's interested in. But I would love to find us get to a place where we can instill, a, you know, draw out that childhood, slap the paint on, um, 
cut the box up mindset in in uh, in electronics in 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 software in energy management in uh, I agree with the company for example things smart things in the household to drive uh, energy management what an opportunity that is let our kids unleash our kids on that it's we don't have the imagination we're too locked in our cultural norms and our behavioral norms to do it but let's enable the next generation to do it so that would be my core ask of of us as a nation yeah. and how we modify or morph our culture moving forward a bit more than on IQ please yeah.